Hi, this is Regina White Favors with Overcoming Life Tired Setback. And so the topic today is I need time away from the classroom. This does not mean that I need time away from teaching. So even though I am not uh, teaching in the classroom beginning summer, I usually teach in the summer. Uh, and I usually teach in the classroom. I teach college English. And I just couldn't do it. I just could not do it. And um, I appealed to my supervisor, who is the chair of, of the English department, and asked her to just assign me online classes. And that's usually not available um, to adjunct faculty because my temporary full-time position ends May of 2024. And so I've decided to go back to or return to adjunct just to stay in the system because when there was a financial crisis 08 to uh, 13, I couldn't get back into the system. And so I didn't get back into the system until about 2013. So therefore, uh, in 2024, I just want to be sure that I don't have problems in that area while I take my break. I need, I actually needed time away from the classroom in 2020, but then the pandemic happened. I remember feeling very frustrated. Um, I returned 2013, uh, seven years later, 2020, and I, I don't know, I think I was just frustrated. Uh, I, I was just getting annoyed. I don't have problems with the students. I didn't necessarily have problems with the classroom itself or teaching English. I think I was just annoyed. I think I was just frustrated. There can be aspects of teaching uh, that... Uh, you kind of struggle with as much as you lay out the foundation, you lay the proper, uh, you know, foundation, uh, organization, structure, and you will still have some students who decide not to abide by that structure. That student is the type of person who's going to send you emails and ask you why. I mean, where is everything? I don't see it on online. When it is very clear, and sure, you may have to take into consideration uh, that how a student views something online may be a lot different from how you structured it for them to see it. But a lot of times students have um, students coming in or coming in directly from high school and they are coming in, coming from environments where they look to the teacher for the source of all their information. Uh, and how to do something versus being self-sufficient versus we give you a syllabus as college instructors. Uh, we go over that syllabus. Sometimes I'll, I will add audio to the syllabus. And then uh, we give you assignment sheets. We give you all of the materials. There's lectures, things like that. And But for some reason, you will still have a good number of students who don't comprehend uh, self-sufficiency, uh, how to research something, how to look at something. And in some cases, we're not even asking you to research at the beginning of the semester. We're asking you to read module one reading, read module two, read module three. Uh, you know, do the exercises, print out the English assignment sheet, read the English assignment sheet. If you don't want to read it, I've added audio to it. Listen to the audio as, as I go over it. There are so many things that we do as college instructors that we go above and beyond, uh, especially with me because I want to create teaching videos, learning teaching videos. And so for uh, a great deal of all of my assignments and modules and lessons or whatever, I have added audio lessons to them. I have um, added me speaking through the particular lesson to the uh, um, um, for that particular document. It can be a reading document. It can be an assignment sheet. It can be the lecture PowerPoint. It can be a number of things. And what students will constantly do will be they would hunt my email. They will hunt for my email and go through the process, 20, 30 minutes of the process of trying to find the email to send me an email to ask me, where is this? Where is that? Where is this assignment? Where is this? And so... When I was starting to feel that process of being annoyed and frustrated, and frustrated, but the pandemic happened. So then we had to quickly adjust from a primarily uh, campus-based class to remote class. 
So that means that I had to create the audio lessons. Uh, that's when I think I really began creating audio lessons um, because I needed to make sure that students got an understanding of, of a particular module. So we had spring break, and then the last two modules after spring break actually required some kind of audio component. And so I, I did a rush uh, of that to try to get students to understand that. I did audio or whatever. And then 2020 got very desperate because then we were losing classes. So I went from three to one uh, classes. And my last semester was fall 2020. So I didn't have any classes all of spring, I mean, all of 2021, which meant that I had to go on unemployment. I had to find other ways to make money. I do score exams. I haven't in a long time. And, um, and then um, it was still getting a little dire. That means that I'm pawning computers or I'm pawning something or I'm just, it's, it, it's just very hard. And so then the chair uh, contacted me via my regular email because I went on ahead and resigned from, from the uh, college because I thought, well, maybe my time is up. Maybe I should return to San Diego. And so then it got even worse in California. So I knew I couldn't go back to San Diego. And so then uh, because I had resigned, the chair had to con had to use my regular email to contact me. And she contacted me somewhere in July, August. Uh, and I thought it was going to be an adjunct. And it turned out that it was um, actually a temporary full-time um, type of position. And so then I began teaching again fall 22, 2022, and then up until now. And so the the um, temporary full-time position um, introduced me to teaching off campus in the dual credit high schools. We have high school students in our classes on the college campuses, but they tend to be the types of students who have a very good understanding. They have come up to the standard of college thinking so we don't have really a lot of behavioral issues that you will find in the college environment. But when you go to the high schools, it's much more stressed. It's, oh my goodness, it's much more stressed. It's much more erratic. It's much more chaotic. You leave there literally, uh, I don't know, with high blood pressure, you could have a heart attack. And so we were not prepared. When we were training to uh, teach in college, uh, going through the the graduate school route versus getting uh, a teaching license. Usually, stu uh, usually uh, people who want to teach in a secondary uh, environment, which is K through 12, they get a bachelor's degree. They they probably spend time in the discipline in the major, and then they study for uh, the state teaching license, and then they get a teaching license, and then they apply for a job. But college teachers is not like that. It is. A bachelor's, master's, PhD in English, or bachelor's, master's, PhD in history. And so you learn and you train and you student teach within a college environment. And it doesn't matter who the student is, uh, whether that student is a high school student or a college student, and they're usually uh, college students, right, college age students. Uh, that's what you are used to. That's what you are accustomed to. That's what you train to, train towards. So fall 2022 marks the very first time where um, I have to consistently go into the high schools. I started back in 2013 or 14, but then there was a gap and then I didn't teach anymore. And then 2022 to 2024 is when I had to spend more time. So then um, it's stressed. I'm not coming to the job or to the campus stress is once I get into the environment. The environment is very chaotic. It's very erratic. Uh, you don't have your own classroom, of course, because you are the college teacher who is visiting, um, who's visiting the classroom. So then you are taking over somebody's classroom, which is very nerve wracking because all of us are teachers. And when we get access to our boards, our whiteboards, we want to prepare the board. Well, here it is. I'm coming in as a college teacher for one to two hours teaching two classes and I'm taking over somebody's classroom and I'm taking over somebody's board. So that means I have to erase. I have to erase everything on the board so I can put the stuff that I need to teach on the board. That bothered me very much because again, we're teachers. Uh, and so I had to do this at multiple 
uh, classrooms, right? And um, and then you're dealing with uh, the teacher uh, whose classroom you're using, wanting to bring some of their students into the classroom that you're teaching in. And the problem with that is that there's a liability issue when it comes to uh, teaching uh, students who are not on roster. So even though she's teaching them, but if they're in the classroom with me, uh, it's a liability uh, issue for my college. So then you have those issues and you um, it, it's uh, reinforcing the idea that they cannot be here and then catching some heat for that. Then you have uh, just everyday uh, secondary education environment issues where maybe a counselor is using the PA system to contact your student to leave your class to go talk to the counselor when the student is supposed to be in your class. The student has to be able to participate and gain points in your class, especially if you have an in-class only activity. So the stress of something like that, because then there may be times where you actually have to accommodate, well, that sets your schedule back, that that affects how you're going to um, uh, manage the other students, right? Because if if this is an in-class only activity and you have to be in class in order to participate and you don't get points if you're not in class, then uh, that student could that student could complain and say it's not fair because their counselor called them to the office. So you have that. Then you have sometimes the college guidance counselor who is responsible for scheduling the students into my classroom um, per semester. Sometimes you have some college guidance counselors who are very professional, organized. Uh, they know not to ask uh, questions about students because students have privacy rights, right? When they're at uh, college, when they are regular just high school students, their parents can come in and talk to um, a teacher. When they are my college students, they have privacy rights on the FERPA. And so I can't discuss their grades or I can't discuss their uh, progress in my class. But rest assured, you will always have the college guidance counselor or some other type of counselor asking you, I know I'm not supposed to ask. They always preface it with that. I know I'm not supposed to ask this. So then you have to constantly reinforce this idea. I cannot discuss um, the student's record, right, their, their progress in my class. So then even on my own uh, campus, I had a recent issue this uh, spring semester we just finished. And I had a recent issue with a, a student success coach who wanted to send me some hasty email about one of my students and wondering if he was going to pass. When she sent the email, the semester hadn't ended. And in my class, as an English class, you have your last paper. And the last paper had to be uh, turned in on a Thursday, and she sent an email on a Tuesday. And I had to reinforce this idea that I cannot discuss that student. It's too premature to tell you whether or not that student is going to pass or not. And so she resends an email, sort of upset. She's upset, and she uh, returns an email and copies her associate dean. As if that was going to, you know, use that to try to get me into trouble and, you know, bully me or, or something like that. And I still have to reinforce the part, the point that this is my student. And I'm not going to really tell you whether or not the student is going to pass because I don't know if the student is going to pass. The student has to turn in the last paper, which is worth 250 points. So then you have administrative stuff that you always have to deal with. Okay. Then you go into the classroom. And you have a variety of students, uh, college students, who want to be there, and there are some who don't want to be there. I can tell the students who are there to just learn. They don't have time for personal personal vendettas or anything like that. They just got to get their, their basics out the way. I'm their teacher. They have accepted it. No problem. Right? They engage. They ask questions. Sometimes they're quiet. They produce really quality, consistent, excellent work. But then you have some students, and they are really few and far uh, in between, but you do have them, 
who think they are kind of superior to you. Here it is. You're their teacher. You are a credential degree, going to college, completed college, completed training, professional development, all that kind of stuff. And you've been teaching for years. And somehow they think they are superior to you. So you can feel their hostility. You can feel how uh, they think about you. Sometimes it can be a gender issue. Sometimes it can be a race issue. But I could be the same race as the student. If the student has that kind of attitude, that student is going to have that attitude with whomever, uh, uh, you know, regardless, right? And so then you have that, and then you have students who want to challenge you. And in some cases, when we're doing any type of challenges, it's a good discussion opener. There's nothing wrong with that. And I, and I don't get so offended uh, to the point that I can't receive what they're saying. I'm trying to process it. I'll put it on the board. I'll talk about it. I get everybody involved. And so that, so that I'm trying to pace out the discussion so I don't get myself upset. Because I can tell when someone is really trying to provoke me. And they're using the subject, the topic of that day, of that lesson to try to provoke me into an answer that they can turn around and use against me. It's the type of person on your job who's trying to provoke you into saying something so that they can then turn around and go to HR on you. And so you have students like that. Then you have students who you know that they can do better than what they are doing, but they are refusing. You know that they can come to class, but they are refusing. Some of my dual credit students who were supposed to be in class were all around the building and they were in other areas of the building and wouldn't come to the classroom. And my classroom is an inviting classroom. It's a very productive, it's task intensive, but it's not one where you need to shy away uh, and feel offended and feel like you can't do it because uh, truth be known, the majority of my students in all my classrooms come to class. And so if, uh, and, and, and the college students definitely have a, a choice to come to class because they are adults. But even in the dual credit high school students, they came to class. So it was just a good handful who were not, uh, they'll show up, they think it's an online class. So then you got the frustrations of that. Okay. Then you have, uh, then you're dealing with students who are consistently uh, producing excellent work uh, that they care about the assignment. They care to listen to you. They care to receive from you. But then you got the distractions of students who don't want to be there. And so then you have this, you begin to form an attitude that you never thought you would ever form uh, because of the students who are distracting when you're really trying to teach everybody. I don't do personal favorites, when I'm grading your work, I don't care if you are, um, if you have achieved an A on previous papers, you still have to do the work on each paper. And you can easily get a B on the next paper if you don't do the work. Even if you are, are even if you think you may fall under the category of an A student. You're not an A student until you get an A in my classroom. And so the classroom is just, it's, I'm so tired. I'm so tired. I'm so tired. I'm so tired. And for all the reasons that I have explored, and there are many, many more, and I probably do one where a separate audio lesson, uh, maybe when I go on video to talk about it, uh, that it's just such a tiring enterprise. I'm not tired of teaching. Again, I, I said this in a previous uh, slide that I'm not, I'm not part of the viral movement of teachers quitting or other people quitting their nine to five jobs. No, I'm not tired of teaching per se. I, I just need a break from the classroom. I need a break. I need a break. And I felt that I needed a break this past semester, spring 2024, when I found myself catching an attitude about a group of uh, students, dual credit students, who, uh, when they come to my classroom, they're very disrespectful. Um, they won't come sometimes, and then sometimes they'll come. Um, um, and you can just you can just feel their hostility. 
And I say, you know what? You know what? I have reached out to you. I have sent feedback. I put, I placed feedback on your, uh, on all of your submissions and I've done all I can. I've sent emails. I put this in an announcement for everybody. I've done so much, uh, to try to reach out to you. You know what? If you don't want to get it, you just don't want to get it. If you don't want to, um, uh, pass, you just don't want to pass. I'm not worried about whether or not you're going to pass. That's on you. And a part of that statement is has some kind of truth and, and um, credence to it. But then I found myself catching an attitude like if you fail, you fail. And I don't remember, I don't ever remember ever having that kind of attitude. And that's when I knew that I needed to take a little bit of break from the classroom. I also needed to take, I also knew that I needed to take a break from the classroom when I found myself uh, raising my tone with uh, four students I asked to stay behind. The ones who keep coming, coming to class late, um, um, being kind of disrespectful, things like that. And when I found myself raising my tone, that's the first time, I think the one time that I raised my tone with a student was back in 2013. The student was extremely disrespectful. She called herself, she was an older woman, older than me at that time. And she called herself coming in like she was, like it was her classroom or something like that. And she asked around, what are we doing? In a very disrespectful manner, but I kind of ignored it. And then she called herself pointing at me from a distance and I knew she was trying to disrespect the situation. So then I had her to step outside and I asked her, why do you, why did you set yourself up to fail? And she didn't understand what I uh, meant. She said that she came late because she had to take her child um, to uh, the nursery, uh, to the daycare. And I said, then why did you, why did you set yourself up to fail? And, uh, and she was really offended by it, but she didn't understand what I meant. I said, so I had to clarify. I said, you set a class. This class begins at 8 o'clock. It goes from 8 to 9.20. You come in at 8.50. You know that you have to take your child to the daycare. You know that. If you're coming in at 8.10, 8.15, 8.20, that could be traffic. That could be trying to get to the campus, things like that. Okay. There may be some leeway with that. There's some points deducted, of course, but there, that's a little bit of leeway. You're coming in at 8.50. We're about to end the classroom by the time you come in. Why did you set yourself up to fail? And so she got upset. She she stormed out, things like that, right? And so you have students like that, and that was back in 2013, and that's when the first time I've ever raised my tone in 2013. Fast forward 2024, and these are high school students, and I had to set them, um, sit them down and have a conversation with them, and I found myself raising my tone. It wasn't as loud as 2013, but it was definitely uh, a tone. And that's when I knew also that I needed time away from the classroom because if I continue to keep going forward in teaching, especially in the classroom, it's either I'm going to be <clears throat> in jail um, uh, I'm going to have a mental break or I'm going to have a heart attack. And so this is the time that I feel like uh, I need time away from the classroom. I I'm, I'm don't need time away from teaching per se, but I'm going to take this opportunity to only teach online with my college so, I, so that I can address uh, my life tired issues. So this is overcoming life tired setback. I need time away from the classroom. Go ahead and uh, please subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell. Also, visit ReginaWifeFavorites.com for tips and resources. Um, thank you very much for listening.